Hello, fine people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm normally a soul scientist, but today I'm a prepper and not weird like Nate. Literally doing what my grandma did and what's been passed down to my family for generations now and replicating it, which somehow is called a prepper nowadays. So anyways, I did start a second channel where I will be doing all these recipes and, and more, because not everything's here. Based on when things are ready to harvest, that is going to be literally like a homesteading channel where I'm going to teach you how to do all this stuff for cheap because I'm not bougie. <laughs> Let's face it, this girl's not bougie. So this was a request from Nate. In the sense that he said, my subscribers won't like you if you don't give them content that's going to save them money. And he was, he was joking about that. But this is how I'm going to convince you to garden because I'm gonna show you how much money, I'll put how much money I save in a year right here because I gotta add all this stuff up. It's shocking. After I did the calculations on salsa, I, my brain broke how much money we save here in this house for two people um, in a year. It's wild. So if you have a family of four times this by two, that's how much money you're going to save. So I'm gonna be going through exactly how to establish that garden for next to zero. And I, by next to zero, I mean it should be zero dollars. And how many plants you need to plant to get a year supply of actual recipes, such as salsa, spaghetti sauce, everything, the stuff that I use, the recipes I use that I'll be showing on the second channel. Whether or not you need a pressure canner, literally the only two recipes you need the pressure canner for are these two. The rest are water bath canning um, and also freezing. So these are open to anyone. Water bath canning, by the way, does not need to be done in a special water bath canner. It can be done in any pot so long as the container is submerged. So we'll be going over the cost of the jar Bars, obviously how long they last for you name it this is going to be very thorough and it's going to give you a good idea on how much you have to budget and so you can look at your grocery bill savings versus the cost to get this sort of stuff set up and how to save yourself money so this none of this should put you in debt this should be like maybe fifty dollars a month extra just to get established with this sort of stuff and that's being generous like that is an over the top amount. So the first month, which would be this month, you would buy the seeds or the plants. The second month would be the jars if you don't have them. And then the third, when things are starting to get ready, would be the pot if you don't have it. But again, if you have the pot, then it's fine, along with like the Ziploc containers and, and that sort of thing. So again, this is like a $150 plan to save you a shocking amount of money. I was shocked by the dollar value of how much you save. The prices I use to compare to are middle of the class, middle class prices. These aren't organic or bougie brands. These are no name brands, which in Canada, it just refers to like the, the great value brand. Like it's the cheapest stuff out there is what I use to calculate these things with. Now, obviously your garden likely is going to be grown organically. You're not going to be using pesticides. You're not going to be using insecticides. So technically a more accurate reference would be to compare this to organic prices. However, I want to be realistic about this and us regular folk are just buying regular food. We're not buying organic, right? So I want to be fair on that aspect, um, but organic wise, double it is basically what it comes down to. So, like I said, I'm gonna tell you how many plants you need to plant, the recipe, exactly what I'm talking about, and the meal plan that I use for basically the entire year with some changes in between. So, let's just get straight into it. So first off, let's talk about the garden. The garden does not need to be expensive. To put this in perspective, any community garden out there that you join into or pay the small fee for, is literally rototilled dirt. That is it, that is all. They remove the grass or they rake the grass off and then they rototill it. They may add some compost, but other than that, that is it, that is all. And that goes for regardless of soil type. And you can do the same with your backyard, your front yard, any sort of meridians, talk to your apartment complex, ask them if the courtyard can have like a small garden area placed in it, you name it. If you don't have access to land in any capacity, and again, it doesn't have to be a rototiller. You can double dig with a shovel and you can also use a broad fork, which I did an entire video on, which will till literally everything. Do not get caught up in dogmatic, no soil setups. Things like compost, things like manure, uh, 
potting soil, you name it, go with the soil. The soil was put there for a reason. It's meant to grow food. We're not meant to put stuff on top of it and then grow on the stuff on top. Okay. So keep that in mind. I'm a soil girl. Rototill that soil. This should cost you next to nothing. If anything, it's going to cost you the Rototill rental basically. Um, but other than that, it should cost you next to nothing. If you are in an apartment, what I encourage you to do is to get a bale of soil, meaning um, this could be like a Sunshine Mix 5, which is my personal favorite. It could be any sort of bag of soil. You're going to cut a hole in the top of said bag and you're going to plant the plant inside of that soil. This means no containers. This means no raised beds. It literally is growing inside that bag. Now, obviously, as time goes on, you're going to have to put it in a container. But for this first year, budget for just the soil, nothing else. You can also think about growing hydroponically, you name it. So if you have a specific scenario that you're concerned won't work for you, please reach out to me, um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, the website gardeningcanada.net you name it and let me know what your situation is send photos send videos and if your situation is very similar to a majority of other situations i think that most people are dealing with i will give you recommendations on how to fix that through a video that i will post online and other people can gain insight from with that being said people who have scenarios where you're having issues gardening or you have had to do it on a budget please let people know in the comments down below how you did it. There are so many ingenious ideas in this Gardening in Canada crew from the subscribers, not, not from me, from the subscribers. Everything from using leaf mold to using straight hay, you name it, I've heard it from the comment section or from you have, who have reached out. So please, you old school subscribers, help out the newbies so that they can support their families. I don't want anyone to starve from a micronutrient standpoint with the price of groceries and I want you to have fresh fruits and vegetables, organic fresh fruits and vegetables available at your disposal for next to nothing. 150 bucks, we're gonna get this done. The first one is salsa. So I will use this recipe for chicken salsa. I will use it in pasta in some cases. Um, I will use it for nachos. I will obviously use it for chip dip. I will use it with fish. I will use it with tacos, burritos, quesadillas, enchiladas, you name it. I use salsa all the time in this house, which is why I have zero salsa here because I clearly went a little crazy this year and ran out before the next batch was ready. So the general rule in Canada is about 77 cents per 100 milliliters. And my household, if I eat this recipe, if I eat one jar, approximately this size, once a week for an entire year, I would spend, if I purchased it from the store, $195 Canadian. That was an American, it would be right here. So $195 Canadian is how much I spend on salsa an entire year. So if you wanted to grow your own salsa and save $195 a year for using it one time a week, you would use my recipe, which is nine pints for one round, and you would repeat the recipe six times. So for one recipe, you would need approximately 18 to 20 pounds of tomatoes, which sounds intimidating, but that's actually only approximately two to three plants. So if you are using like a Roma or a beefsteak, that means that you would need to plant 18 plants to do an entire year's worth of salsa, of tomato plants, which really isn't that many. That's only one, less than one bed of my four by eight bed. So it's really not that many plants. Right now everything's on sale. So I just picked up 36 tomato plants from like Superstore. They're 50% off. I think like 30 bucks. It's like a dollar a plant right now. So very inexpensive. Next thing you need for salsa is an onion. So onions, again, you can buy sets or you can buy the, the, the plant, the seed, seeded version, three bucks maybe for several. Um, so you only need one large onion for the entire nine pints. And so you'd uh, do this six times, so you need six onions total. And again, that's like a quarter of a pack, but we use onions in quite a few of these recipes, so get a whole pack. The next one is bell peppers. So any color will do. Um, one plant will yield about four-ish peppers, meaning if you want to repeat this uh, recipe six times, you would need two plants, typically. Jalapenos, one plant only. 
these have a lot of plants on them or a lot of uh, jalapenos show up on just one plant so one plant you give you five jalapenos if you don't like spicy then you just skip the jalapeno pepper altogether the next one is garlic so you need seven cloves of garlic which is literally one garlic plant which seems a bit ridiculous but we use garlic again a lot throughout this entire recipe um you can just do like canned garlic on its own without incorporating in a recipe and then you can use it for all your cooking right and that is for chicken salsa save you 200 ish dollars per year so the next one i like to do is spaghetti sauce which is this stuff here and i like to do the quart jar so this is a quart for anyone who doesn't know about canning one quart here it is very pretty tastes so good so for this bad boy I liked to do, my recipe is nine, yeah, so my recipe is for 10 quarts, 10 of these. And if you were to eat this pasta in any capacity, or even um, cabbage rolls, pierogies, meatballs, all actually go into pasta sauce. Like this recipe of pasta sauce is pretty bland on its own, not bland, but it's basic. So you can jazz this up in so many different ways. Like I will do, um sour cream for example if i wanted like a rosé version of it um i will use this in lasagnas you name it so if you're using pasta sauce just in general at least once a week for an entire year you would want to repeat this recipe between five to six times so this is what you're going to need to do one round which is 10 of these 10 of these jars one time round if you wanted to do this obviously for an entire year supply you would times everything by six so you need 25 pounds of tomatoes again sounds extreme but it's 10 pounds of tomatoes per plant if you are staking and doing everything correctly which means you need um two to three plants per 10 of these <laughs> so that's it two to three plants that is it that is all obviously if you want to repeat the recipe five to six times um, you would need uh, um, between 15 and 18 plants total i don't even do the five onions to be totally honest i only do about one onion per Bath. so I only do five onions total so I do one plant yeah so I do one plant per jar so I do six onions for my pasta sauce is what I aim for and then peppers I like to put green peppers in mine you don't have to um, do green peppers if you don't want to you could do basil for example um, you could do spinach you name it there's so many different options um, but I do five pepper green peppers again that's one to two plants depending on your yields totally optional and then one garlic clove so one literal garlic plant so generally it's 46 cents per 100 milliliters here in Canada and one jar is around a thousand milliliters which is pretty much identical to the quart um, so this comes to around four dollars and sixty cents per one of these which is crazy like that this is four dollars and sixty cents and like i said it is pennies like this is pennies to me it's just crazy to me that they charge so much and it saves my house 180 dollars a year just this stuff so i don't run out of this we still have so many jars in the basement i go overkill on this because again i use it for so many things i keep it basic and then i add or jazz it up as necessary so what i don't have here is pesto um i like putting pesto on eggs things like that so if you like pesto you want to do quite a bit of basil like a lot of basil i do an entire planter raised planter approximately the size of this in basil as well as i put it in a whole bunch of different containers around the garden and then pine nuts which you can't grow here but basil is another one that you can can and i just do it in these little jars like this size um for those bad boys so coleslaw in a can sounds shocking absolutely delicious none here because my husband literally eats it non-stop so coleslaw um you would repeat the this recipe that i have 11 times but it comes out to i base this on just the slaw in the bag because this is like a to-go meal. You can take this for lunch type thing. So the slaw in a bag here in Canada, the numbers on this is shocking. So it is um, 75 cents per 100 gram. And one jar of slaw that I make, which comes out to one of these, because my husband takes it to work, like for lunch, and I will use it for lunch too. So one slaw in a jar, and it's crispy and everything. Trust me, you're gonna love this recipe. So I will repeat this recipe 11 times only because we love it. It saves us in a year on salad, $224.40. 
So you don't need much of it. You need one cabbage. You need one carrot, one green pepper, and one onion. That makes six pints. So it makes six of these bad boys. Very inexpensive uh, cabbage right now. You can buy a six pack of cabbage, like cabbage babies, uh, for like a dollar fifty. Uh, carrots, we'll see pack with hundreds of carrots in it is like three dollars um green pepper plant again they're like a dollar a plant at this point and onions an entire bag of sets is like three bucks and you probably just buy a bag of sets and it's a your supply generally speaking so that is for the coleslaw next up is potatoes so i did 20 pounds of seed potatoes this year um so seven or 20 pounds of finished potatoes so per plant it's 20 pounds or two pounds per plant. So for household of two, um, you need about 10 plants total of potatoes. I go overkill clearly because I like to dry them and make like Idaho potatoes. But if you were to do a canned potato, which I can in the quartz, you can make these into baked, mashed, whole, you name it. It's ready to go, very tasty, um, but potatoes, you would need 20 pounds total, so 10 plants, and that would make you seven quarts. So it would make you seven of, of these bad boys. Meaning if you wanted a year's supply, you would repeat this recipe approximately eight times, um, give or take. And so you would obviously want 80 potato plants planted. Seems like overkill, but potatoes, are they're not super expensive but they're kind of expensive so the total for that is a hundred and eight dollars and 86 cents saved but it's one of those things where organic is a lot less creepy <laughs> because if we're talking like something that's going to absorb contamination from the soil it's going to be the thing that's in the soil so potatoes so um organically grown much more tasty um, and canned for that. You can obviously dry them as well. So the next one is Rubens. Sounds bizarre, but we like doing Rubens in our house quite often. And you need cab or cabbage for that. You need sauerkraut for that. So you need to do about 25 pounds of cabbage. That's how much I do, which is five large heads. Not necessary. You could literally do one or two. Um, and that is going to, it's around um, $3.89 per quart at the the store i i do i want to say 10 of these ish jars so grand total i'm saving about 30 dollars 40 to box on sauerkraut but again organically grown cabbage is another one of those things where it's like leaf layer after leaf layer after leaf layer if they're applying pesticides insecticides anything you're eating it so i like to do that from scratch. So this next round is completely up to you. There is the mirepoix, which I did an entire video on the different types of mirepoix and why you would use them. They're used in stews, soups, any sort of cooking that you want flavor in, like artisan cooking is mirepoix, by the way. Check out the video on why that is. Peas, corn, um, things of that nature. So for this, this is your freezer food. So this is your bags that you purchased from the store or cobs so i freeze my corn cobs these are from last fall still i cut them in half i parboil them cut them in half and then what i'll do is i'll actually put them inside of um tin foil butter i like to do seasoning salt like french fry seasoning salt stick them in the barbecue mm, these are so good um baked like that that's actually my sister this if you're watching that was her idea a little bit of lemon or lime juice oh my goodness super delicious so i freeze my corn this way but you can obviously take the corn off and freeze it um peas you can freeze onions carrots and celery all can be frozen if you desire um this was prior to when i got my vacuum sealer so this is just like in a regular freezer ziploc but obviously a vacuum sealer would be better but regardless so it's about 70 cents per 100 grams for frozen veggies in Canada. Again, this is the no-name stuff. Meaning, um, if you were to use one entire bag, so a 750 gram bag, which is just the regular bag of frozen veg a week, it's $312 a year, or $315 a year is what I'm saving. So for my house, I like to grow. So I like to plant 350 carrots, which seems like a lot, but it's really not that much. And then for celery, I only do 
10 plants, but it's around 1,000 grams minimum, minimum for each celery plant. If you're in a cold climate and you want a perennial celery plant, go for Loveridge, which is identical to celery on all aspects. The leaves, the stems, you name it, can be frozen, dried, you, everything. So celery, Loveridge, same thing. Don't plant a ton of them because they do have some Loveridge here, but 1,000 grams per plant minimum weight. The next one is peas. So per person in the house, it's 15 to 20 plants per year. And so that works out to about 50 pounds total for us for an entire year. And again, I will do two different methods for this. So I will freeze, obviously, and then I will do snap peas that are pickled. So these pickled snap peas, sounds weird, but it's dill and onion, or dill and garlic in the bottom, and then snap peas that are pickled. These guys are really tasty in stir fries. So I like to do snap peas in stir fries and for whatever reason, these ones are better. Plus these can be eaten just like straight out of a can, um, raw. So that's for peas. The next one is green beans. So these bad boys here. Um, so it's one quart, one quart is this, is two pounds. So depending on how many pounds of beans you wanna do, um, my family, I like them, my husband does not. So they're not his favorite. So what I like to do is just like little half pints uh, or the pints, sorry, of these guys. Anyway, so it comes out to uh, 56 quarts, which is 112 pounds of beans. Uh, it's about half a pound per plant. These plants are not big plants. So you can really smoosh them together, which gives me around 224 pounds, which is a hundred foot row is what you would need to plant that many plants. But again, it's my family's not a huge fan of these, so use with caution. So cabbage rolls, very expensive at the store. Um, it basically comes out to two bucks a cabbage roll, depending. So if you did two cabbage rolls per meal and you had this meal once a week, you would need one medium-sized head to do a dozen cabbage rolls. So you would repeat the recipe nine times for two people for an entire year to have cabbage rolls. And I'm talking like the big meat and rice cabbage rolls. I'm not talking like the little tiny ones. So that would mean you would need nine cabbage heads, um, which if you can't grow them, they're pretty cheap to get and do on your own. Dollars a cabbage roll, and we eat four cabbage rolls a week, it's eight bucks times by 56. I mean, yeah. Whoa, that's crazy. And I'll use deer meat for that. I'll insert some footage of what my canned deer meat looks like, but yeah, it's just pressure canned deer meat. Beet relish, which I don't have because I haven't done this yet. Actually, my neighbor gave me the recipe for beet relish, so I'm excited to do that. But I do have just pickled beets, so this is pints. Um, I do, it's four pints, you need two pounds of beets. One beet is around a quarter of a pound, meaning you need eight plants for four of these jars. My family's not a huge plant or huge beet, pickled beet person. My husband actually doesn't like anything pickled, which is very odd to me because I love everything pickled. But I only do two rounds of this. So I only do 16 plants worth of beets for this, but I am doing the beet relish this year, which is like a sweeter relish. Super tasty. I tasted it from the Hutterites. I'm in love now. I have the recipe. It's happening this year. But beet relish, I'm, I grew a few more beets for that. So the next one is squash. You can use this for pasta squash or pasta sauce. You can roast it as well as just store it in the basement. I do stored spaghetti squash, which I'm out of, of course. Um, but they literally will, they'll preserve in a cold room, which I have under my steps for many, many months. The price on this is shocking. So my family, year savings is $111. And this is for like a spaghetti squash or like some sort of spaghetti squash recipe. It is one plant is about 14 pounds per plant. And you need approximately one to two plants per person, obviously pending, obviously pending however much you need to eat. So that, and this one's drastic. So conventional is $1.99 a pound. And for organic, it's $2.46 a pound, which is crazy. So one plant is worth $28 retail if it just produces 
the 14 pounds it's supposed to and doesn't go over the top in production. So that's crazy. Um, the next one is roasted carrots. So roasted carrots, um, you can do like a canned version or frozen or a frozen version of roasted carrots. It's one pound is approximately three servings, which is six, which is comes to around six carrots for me. Um, so that means 350 carrots, which again, not a lot of space, but obviously some. There are obviously things like pickles, jalapenos you can do, um, both of which are pickled. Um, you can do pears. This is something that literally my coworker had a random pear tree and I was like, yeah, I'll take your dirty pears. She's like, they're not edible. They're so edible. I made her a bunch of jars of this and now she eats it. Um, frozen jam, like frozen freezer dried jam. Great way to buy jam. Make sure it doesn't take up space in your freezer. You name it. So if you're looking to save serious amounts of money in groceries this year, and these prices likely are just going to go up, this is what you want. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And let me know in the comments down below what your delicious recipes are, what you preserve for your season, how long your garden feeds you for, if it's just a kitchen garden or if it's like a prepper garden. You guys have to let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.